Get a pen and paper handy because I've got a list of everything that you're going to need to start seeds in 2023. Welcome back everybody. Carmen here with Fresh Cut Flower Farm. And whether you're a small flower farmer like me or you're a home gardener, I have got a comprehensive list of everything that you need if you want to try seed starting in 2023. So the first thing that you want to think about, obviously, is what seeds are you going to grow? And the reason why you want to already be thinking about that is because you do need to get those ordered as early as possible. And I will share with you in a future video the seeds that I will be planting in 2023. There are some seeds that you can just plant directly into the garden, but that's not the focus of this video. In this video, I want to focus on seeds starting indoors. Now that you've decided what seeds you're going to grow, you need to decide how you're going to grow them. You can start them in soil blocks. You can start them um, in cell trays. Now, if you're new to soil blocking, soil blocking is a great way to start a lot of seeds in a small space. With the soil blocking method, there are a few supplies that you need. First of all, you need your soil blocker. I use the three quarter inch soil blocker. And so there are 20 soil blocks um, in each uh, soil blocker. And there are a couple of other sizes available. I think they're one and a half inch and two inch. I'm not 100% positive on that. You'd have to look it up. Um, but that is something you can check into if you have an interest in that. But for me, the three quarter inch is sufficient. And so that is what I start the vast majority of my seeds in because I can start a lot of seeds in a small amount of space. And I think the soil blocking method is a great option if you don't have space for a huge setup. And then you'll need a tub to mix your ingredients in. This is just a concrete mixing tub that I use that I got at Lowe's for like seven or eight dollars. And then you need something to mix up your ingredients with. I like to use just a good old potato masher. I think it works better than anything else. And then you need your trays to put your soil blocks on. I have three different sizes of trays. I have a small styrofoam tray and I got these at Dollar General. I believe they were like 50 for a dollar and I can fit 40 soil blocks onto that tray. The next size up is a tray that holds a hundred of the soil blocks and that I also got at Dollar General and those were a dollar a tray. And then the next size up is um, a, just like a, a baking sheet. I got those at the Dollar Tree for a dollar each and I believe those will hold 160 trays. So as you can see, you can put a lot of seeds in a very small amount of space. Now, if you prefer to use cell trays, the 72 and the 128s are probably the most popular. There are other sizes available, um, but those probably aren't used nearly as much. I prefer the 128s because you can start more seeds in the same amount of space and the seedlings will still get big enough to transplant out into the garden. And then if you have cell trays, you also need a bottom tray to set your cell tray in to water your seedlings. And I like the shallow uh, bottom trays because I find that it's much easier to bottom water your seedlings. So the next thing, once you've decided whether you're going to soil block, whether you're going to use cell trays or both, you need to decide what growing medium you're going to use. I keep things very simple. I use potting soil. Um, and I use that for my cell trays. And then I also use it as one of the two ingredients that I put into my soil blocks. So with my soil blocks, you want to, your soil blocks need to be really dense so they'll hold together. And if you go online you and type in soil blocking recipe recipes, you're going to find a lot of good soil blocking recipes out there. The reason why I only use uh, potting soil and bagged compost is because that's just what's available in my area. Some of those other ingredients, I, I just can't find them in my area. So I just keep it simple. It is important when you mix your ingredients together for soil blocking that you do sift those ingredients so that they're very fine so they will hold together. 
And if you're not new to seed starting, this is a great time to go through those supplies, make sure that you've got everything that you need. Obviously mine need cleaned, so that's something that I'll get done uh, during this time so I'm not so rushed when it is time to start seeds. So now you know what seeds you're growing, you know how you're going to start your seeds, and you know what medium that you're going to use to start those seeds in. But there are a few other supplies that I like to have on hand. One of those is plastic wrap. After I start my seeds, I like to put plastic wrap over the tray because I it helps to retain that moisture um, to help uh, get better germination. The next thing that you want to have is some sort of a label. Now you can use either just masking tape or you can just drop a regular old plastic or wooden label in there. You could even use like craft sticks, but you do want to make sure that you use a garden marker to label it with so when you water it, it doesn't get washed off. You'll also need fertilizer, so make sure that you've got that on hand to fertilize your seedlings with, and you do fertilize at half strength on your seedlings. And then some natural, because you will inevitably get gnats, and you want a way to kill that larvae. So make sure you have some natural, and then you should also have the um, yellow sticky traps that you can hang um, from your grow lights. That's how I did, I just taped them up there hang them down so they can catch any of the more mature flies that um, will appear, I promise. Fact of life, death and taxes and gnats will happen, I promise. Okay, now that you've got all of your supplies together, it's time to start thinking about lights, okay? So whether you have a full setup like what I've got here, or maybe you just have something uh, on your tabletop at home. Either way works fine. You don't need anything expensive. Um, these are just shop lights and ballast that I got at Lowe's and hung up there. That's all that is and they work fine, but you do want to make sure that you're checking them. All right, so plug them in, check them. Do, are they, do you have any burned out bulbs? Do you need to get any new lights? Are all of your ballasts working? And once I turned mine on, I realized how dirty the tops of them were. So it's a good time to just go through, take your vacuum, and clean up any uh, soil that had spilled out from last year. And then another thing that you can do just to speed things up um, come 2023 is just to lower down all your lights because you know you're going to need them down low because you want them very, very close to the tops of your seedlings. So um, throughout the growing season, mine always get kind of wonky as my, as my flowers are at different stages. So uh, I just go through, get them all lower down to the same level so they're ready to go. A couple of things that you don't necessarily need, but I think is very convenient is a surge protector, especially if you have multiple lights, like what I've got. Now, if you just got one or two, you probably don't need a surge protector. You can just plug them into your outlet. But then also a timer because you want your lights on 16 hours a day. And so a timer is so handy rather than trying to remember to run down and plug them in and then unplug them before you go to bed. So um, it's not necessary, but I think it is definitely worth the 10 bucks that a, a timer costs. So um, that's my advice, get you a timer. So another thing that isn't absolutely necessary, but I think is beneficial are heat mats. Now, um, I have found that for me, heat mats, um, I tend to get a little bit better germination and I tend to get germination a little bit quicker. So I do think that they are worth um, the investment that they cost. And I don't know, I think I paid maybe around uh, about 15 or $16 each for mine and I got them off of um, Amazon. And if you already have heat mats, plug them in, feel of them, make sure that they're getting warm, that none of them are, um, you know, that they're all working. And as far as, and I don't have the kind where you can, uh, I, I have the inexpensive ones. I don't have the most expensive kind. They do fine, you know, I'm cheap. 
I admit it, I'm cheap. I guess if, if it ever bites me, then maybe I'll get the fancy kind. But for now, those are working just fine. And I think I'm on my second season with those. So that's it, guys. That's really all that you need to start seeds. There's no fancy equipment required. Um, that's all you need. You need some seeds. You need some soil. You need some light. That's it. Now, if there is anything that I have forgotten, or if you have uh, something that you start seeds with that you think is very helpful, please comment below. And that's it for now. See you guys next time. Bye.